that the holy prophet muhammad وسلم, was mentioned by name in the bible i have read the bible through many 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 times and others such as i have read it many more times what has happened is this the old testament according to christian authorities was preserved in the hebrew language in the old testament in the song of solomon chapter 5 verse 16 in the hebrew language it reads hikko mamittakin wi kullu muhammadin zahdudi wi zahrai bainat jerusalem song of solomon chapter 5 verse 16 the word muhammadim is muhammad im im i am im im is a plural of respect in hebrew you see the first verse of the bible book of genesis chapter 1 verse 1 it says in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth the word god in hebrew there is elohim in hebrew el el stands for god ella stands for god elohim is a plural form to say with all respect and reverence plural of respect The word is there in the Hebrew language. In the original, what they call original, it's there. But they have translated that in English as altogether lovely. So this beloved of mine is altogether lovely, says Solomon. You can't associate with the word Muhammad. You read it a thousand times, altogether lovely, altogether lovely. Or let's say in another language, the praised one, the praised one. Muhammad means the praised one. But he said the praised one, the praised one. You can't think that he's talking about Muhammad. Though Muhammad means the praised one. You have no right to translate names of people. إذ قالت الملائكة يا مريم إن الله يبشرك بكلمة بكلمة منه اسمه المسيح عيسى بن مريم. The story of Jesus' birth is narrated in vivid detail in the Quran. As in the Bible, an angel tells Mary she is pregnant despite being a virgin. But the story of what follows then changes completely. In the Bible, Mary's role is limited to the passive mother of Christ. The Quran gives accounts of her ancestry, her birth, her childhood in the Temple of Solomon, and as mother of Jesus. She's the only woman mentioned by name in the Quran. And the ability to talk as a newborn child is one of many miracles not recorded in the biblical account of Christ's life. We have more sayings in the Islamic tradition about Jesus than you'll find in the Gospels themselves. So there is a possibility that other things did happen. There were many Gospels around uh, that didn't all make it into the New Testament. And the church tried to limit the number of Gospels. In the Christian narrative, the, the, the most central and fundamental point of Christianity is the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Well, Islam basically denies that. To find the story of Christ's crucifixion and resurrection being changed is too much for some Christians. Jay Smith is an evangelical Christian who spent 25 years studying Islam. He 
is dedicated to disproving the Quran's version of Jesus' last day on earth. If Jesus were to come down to Speaker's Corner, I would imagine he'd get up on the ladder like I'm going to get up on the ladder. And what he would say to Musa specifically is he would probably confront them with what they've done to him. What their scriptures have done to him, not them personally, what their scriptures have done to him by taking away his divinity, by also suggesting that the greatest act of history, the most sacrificial uh, act that anybody has done to die for mankind, God himself to die for that which he has created, has completely been eradicated, has completely been thrown out of their scriptures. The essence of Islam is submission to the absolute, to the divine. And that's what, where salvation lies, in submission to the divine, or at least a recognition of the divine. In Christianity, salvation lies through the acceptance of the blood of the Lamb. That is, is a completely different narrative than the Quran is giving. Who's right? Well, the Quran says, you make your choice here, and I'm going to let you know in the next world. In the Quran, it says that on the Day of Judgment, God will actually ask Jesus Christ, did you tell the people? that you were God. And Jesus says, You know what I said. You see everything I say and do. I would never say that. Glory to you. Transcendent are you. I would never say that. I have no right to say that. Why aren't you Muslim? Why aren't I? I'm a Jew. Why You're a Jew? Oh. I was previously Christian. No, no. For Christians to believe that Jesus was God in human form is absolutely fundamental because um, it means that God understands us. God isn't some distant deity living in the glory of heaven. Uh, he can understand what it's like to be in pain, to be betrayed, uh, to be hurt, to be bruised, uh, to be bullied. God understands our situation. If Jesus was God, then who was supporting the world while he was supposed to be dead? Or, or um, if he was God, then who was he praying to? Three books. What doesn't work is that God has family. I can't believe that Mary can give birth to, to God. For God to be God, he has to be the creator and have and not not, not become part of creation. Officials uh, act that anybody has done to die for mankind, God himself to die for that which he has created has completely been erased. But God is not bound in the frame of reference. He is the creator of time. Time is a creation of God. Matter is a creation of God. These are transient entities. Transient entities cannot come into existence by themselves. So when we talk about frame of reference, we must clearly understand that every time we ask questions about God in time, knowing the future, we have to be very careful in how we're defining this terminology. For God's knowledge of the future, of my future, is absolute in His domain. He knows everything. But he's not bound in the time where he is experimenting himself, for he's not bound in space, time or matter. Those are created entities which he has put into it. So for me to put him into it would be also very wrong. Adam was created from no female and no male. Eve was created from one male and no female. Jesus was created from one female and no male. And all of us have been created from one male and one female. These are four examples for us to benefit from to understand the divinity of our Creator. then there is no difference that cannot be overcome between Christianity and Islam.